When you think of learning, what do you guys typically think of? Something like this? Or something like this? Or even worse, something like that? No, what if I told you that you guys could do both? This might sound crazy, but hear me out. Oh, have you guys ever heard of experiential learning? Come on, you're uni students. Of course you have. But do any of us really know what it really means to do experiential learning? Probably not, because if we did, we'd all be begging our professors to add it into our courses. So let me break it down for you. The term experiential learning is self-explanatory because it basically combines the two words, experience and learning. However, there is a lot of scholarly research that combines multiple definitions and interpretations of what experiential learning actually is. The most famous publication is Schools of Tomorrow, written by John Dewey and his daughter Evelyn. And no, I'm not talking about futuristic schools run by robots. Written in 1915, the book proposed a new approach to teaching in the classroom by incorporating actual experience into lesson plans. This could be anything from class activities to practical, hands-on experience. John Dewey described this as learning by doing, which is a key factor in experiential learning. As uni students, we typically learn about our future careers by doing homework, doing projects, doing presentations, all related to information presented to us in the classroom, but we aren't actually doing what we're learning. That is, actually practicing what we're being taught. Sophocles once said, way back in 400 BC, that one must learn by doing the thing, for though you think you know it, you have no certainty until you try. We can all memorize information from a PowerPoint slide and confidently say that, according to Newton's first law of motion, an object at rest remains at rest, and an object at motion remains in motion unless otherwise acted upon. But how do we actually know that unless we test the law through some sort of physical interaction with an object at rest and an object in motion? We might think we know the information, but we don't actually know it until we physically experience that information rather than just mentally storing it in our brains. Another way experiential learning has been defined is by Jay Hoover and Carlton Whitehead, who proposed that this type of learning exists when someone cognitively, effectively, and behaviorally processes knowledge, skills, and or attitudes in a learning situation characterized by a high level of active involvement. This is a bit more formal, but it's important because it shows us that experiential learning incorporates not just intellectual learning, but also our behavior, our skills, our actions, our attitudes, our opinions, our reactions, basically anything that we internally experience with an external physical experience. It's not just sitting in a classroom robotically writing down notes. It allows us to be human by using our senses, thinking about how we feel or reflecting on how we respond. Now you might be wondering, what types of experiential learning exists for uni students? Well, there are opportunities for experiential learning in all fields of study. For example, math competitions, interning in your related field, university research, stock pitch competitions, ESL teaching, attending a local play, student teaching, interning at a hospital, going to an international film festival, and of course, courses like ours. So just because you're not taking a course in theater or outdoor learning, doesn't mean you can't enjoy experiential learning. There are so many amazing benefits to it that every student should be able to receive while studying at uni. Just ask some of your classmates. Here are some top of the class straight A students sharing their thoughts on experiential learning. What did you learn from this experience? I learned uh, multiple different unexpected lessons. Um, I think there are a lot of metaphors to be found in nature, such as the river that uh, slowly makes the canyon. Your efforts will slowly make a large impact. And uh, I think being in nature, being with people um, that you are kind of just randomly placed with, you can learn a lot of lessons from interacting with them. 
uh, and and nature is just kind of the medium in that situation. But getting out in nature, uh, kind of find a lot of unexpected lessons from that. Yeah, I think that seeing it for yourself and hands-on learning is the best way to learn. What have you learned this trip? Uh, uh, what like about what lessons have you learned? Lessons have I learned. Like values. Look, lessons. look down so that you uh, don't like trip or anything, but also make sure you look up so that you can see the beautiful scenery around you. And talk to people. So always say hi. Because people love that shit. Have you learned anything or... that you'll be able to? <laughs> have you learned anything that you'll be able to take um, out of this that you can apply in your life or in your occupation or at uni? Uh, if you don't think you can do it, keep going because you can. And doing stuff in a group is always better than doing it on your own because you have like the support of the group, group dynamic, it's key. Do you reckon you could have experienced the same uh, kind of lessons? Yeah, uh, on my own? No, doing something else, so not experiential learning in an outdoor scenario. Is oh, there no. any other way you could have got these, these, these lessons? No way, no way. If I wasn't out there doing that like all weekend, like, I feel like one hike just for the day would have been chill, but like doing it one hike for one day, then going back to cabins and then spending the entire day out in nature and then going back and then like finishing off in nature, like the whole experience, I don't think I would have like had nearly as much time to soak it all in. Yeah. I learned to appreciate all people's uh, like, background, circumstances, sure. and like past and stuff and uh, really yeah. just connect with anyone, cool. even if they're... Yeah a bit different than me and just like try and like understand people in a, in a deeper way you know we learned a lot about aboriginal culture um one of my favorite parts was when we sat on the big rocks overlooking like the all the trees and stuff and we just kind of like sat there and jack told us the story about how like all the tribes would come and the rocks have been there for millions and millions of years so they would come and tell just like folk tales and stuff, which I thought was really cool because we were sitting on it and I was like, cool. What folk tales can I tell here? Um, yeah, like, it's not like the normal sit down, like, oh, here you go, here's a test, like, take this test. It's more of like you go outdoors, you get to explore, you get to see everything, you get to learn about different things, you get to see the actual culture. Uh huh, it's amazing. Thank you for your interview, Lauren. For me, uh, in sports, being on a team and completing or working <laughs> towards a final goal, um, that's sort of the same in sports and what we got from this class by all of us working together to get to the end of the hike. So, but it's, I mean, that's also like an outdoor activity, so, <laughs> you know. How about you, Davis? Any other way you could have learned the same lessons other than being outdoors? No, I'm not. I concur with uh, Kate. Sports pretty good, but can't really beat nature, huh? Yeah, experiential learning, baby. It's the way to go. So if you want to know what it's like to interact with what you're learning, then I want you to vote for experiential learning in all courses. saw some whales, they just kind of were like, like throwing their tails out. Um,